All right, guys, we're back. So first off, thank you all very much for the thousand subscribers. Uh, really blessed to have hit it that fast, honestly. I mean, to do it in basically two weeks, like that's that's, that's a pretty good deal. So anyways, I promised you guys a 6L80 video and that's exactly what we're gonna do. So it actually worked out timing wise was perfect because I've got this blue 2016 Silverado that I did the video on uh, just prior to this one. And I had already told the customer that I was going to drive it home, finish trans tuning. I want to make sure the truck was perfect. So I went ahead on, put some fuel in the truck, and we're actually going to drive this thing around and do the trans tuning. We're actually going to start from scratch. So a little bit of trans tuning I did yesterday. Obviously, I have that trans file, um, but I'm going to show you guys how to build one from scratch. So first and foremost on this truck, um, we have a tire size that's a little bit larger than stock. So I'm gonna let y'all in right away. Let's start off with the tips and tricks. So when you're doing tire size on a GM vehicle, a lot of you guys are going on to, you know, whatever manufacturer's website, or you're just getting on Google and you're finding out what your tire size is and you're typing it straight in. You've probably noticed that your speed, even if you type in the correct tire size is a little bit quick. Promise, I don't know why this is, take whatever the tire size is and subtract a half inch off of what, whether you're working on a Camaro, whether you're working on a truck, no matter what you're working on, for whatever reason, the HP Tuners calculator, whether it's them, whether it's GM, I don't know, half inch, take it off, you'll be dead nuts on the GPS. So the first thing we're gonna do is, is change tire size on this truck. So let's open up our, our file. And to change tire size, we're gonna go to edit, uh, gear and tire wizard. And right now we're at 30.87 uh, inches of tire size right here and we're at uh, 342 gear ratio. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna type in this truck has a 285-45-22 uh, diameter. So I'm gonna search for that on Google. And there's a, there's a website called Tacoma World. It almost always pops up, it'll look like that. Um, by far my favorite website. So I've got 32.1 inches, so we're gonna subtract the half inch, so we're at 31.6 inches. Uh, and 342 and we're going to hit adjust right here and adjustment is complete so now all of the tire size stuff anything that's related to tire diameter has been changed automatically so if we go into trans and we click shift scheduling you'll see where everything has changed that means that it has been modified i'm going to close out this stock file because this was actually just a factory file for 2016 all right, so you'll see how it's all in pink. That's the stuff that the truck's automatically changed. So tire size is done. So the next thing we're gonna do um, is gonna, we're gonna go to our torque converter. This is very, very critical on the factory torque converters and aftermarket torque converters. Um, so we're gonna click torque converter and we're gonna see this TCC desired slip. All of this stuff, basically what GM does is GM allows for a slip. Uh, meaning that the torque converter clutch is never 100% locked. So say the slip says it wants 20 RPM of slip, that means that the they have PWM, which is pulse width modulation, and what it's gonna do is it's going to modify the pressure on the clutch to allow for that 20 RPM slip, or 10 RPM slip, or three RPM slip. Whatever it is, that's what it's fighting for. So that's the reason why GM's uh, torque converters have these issues. So we're gonna disable that too right now. So we're gonna go to AC off first, Click top left as always, gonna just type in zero. And we're gonna do this for all of them. All right, same with this minimum slip AC on, zero. Zero it out. Next thing, use DOD slip, we're gonna disable it. And just to be uniform as always, we're gonna go in here and zero all these out too. So you'll see when, when the factory, uh, when you're driving your vehicles, I mean, if you look, it was allowing you know, 40, per, 40 RPM slip here, AC off would have been another 20 RPM. So you're talking 60 RPM of slip. So y'all can imagine um, how a clutch can react or how long it can last if it's constantly slipping. Um, so these, these factory torque converters, if you ask a guy that actually, that, that does torque converters, these things are actually amazing torque converters. GM just runs these things, these torque converters ragged with their factory tuning. So right now, again, even though, yes, I'm in a cam truck, yes, we've got a 3200 stall, these are all changes that you're gonna make with a factory torque converter. Um, so now that we've got that done, um, if you want to stop there, you're more than welcome to. Um, just taking care of this and turning off DOD, which I showed you guys yesterday, 
um, will make a world of difference in how your truck drives. If you want to go above and beyond, the first thing to do on a stock style truck is going to be to use Blue Cat tool. And if I can find a um, current website that has this tool as a free download, if I can find it, um, I will go on and drop it down in the description. So check the description below. If not, you may have to scour Google, but you're looking for Blue Cat transmission tool. Um, so I already have mine. So I'm going to go ahead on and show you guys what I do um, on a stock vehicle again. Um, we'll, we'll adjust this for our tire size that I put in for this specific truck, which is 30.6 inches. Um, but we're going to start off with that. And we're actually, I'm going to go ahead on and drive this truck with the settings that we put in here. Um, even though, yes, it has torque converter, we're going to, I'm going to go ahead on and drive this thing and we're going to see actually how this stuff works. And by the way, I hope you guys like my new setup. Um, I do have the wireless mic now, which we'd already discussed, but I have figured out how to run a GoPro on the windshield. So I've got a Hero 8 up on the windshield right now, so I don't have to worry about that webcam flying around. So we actually have a windshield mount and everything. So anything else you guys can think of, please let me know. Um, but I'm just happy to have figured this out. So anyway, so we got our, our Blue Cat software opened up. And if I can't find a website, what I may end up having to do is I may drop this in a, in a Google, Google Drive and give you all access to it. Um, but for now, I'm just going to hope that I can find a current application for this and have a link for you guys to click at the bottom. All right, so obviously, we're, the first thing we're going to start off with is our transmission type. Um, obviously, this is a 6L80 video. We're going to do a 6L80. So now, again, this video is going to be more specific to Gen 5. I am going to go ahead on and do a Gen 4 specific vehicle in the next Gen 4 vehicle that I get access to. I will also do a big power video for a big power 6L80. I've, I've had these trucks hold 1,000 plus horsepower, no problems. Um, the only failures I usually see is if we have one that's already had a bunch of abuse from the converter clutch material going through the pump. They usually don't last that long. Um, also in the heavier trucks, you start getting into four wheel drive launches and super aggressive converters. They'll get to where they build so much heat that they won't actually tolerate it. But either way, I want to do videos on that. So this video I'm going to do specifically for Gen 5. This is going to translate to your Gen 4 if you have them, other than you'll have to look at your shift RPM and stuff to make sure it's going to be the same. Um, so for instance, one of the next things we're going to do is we're going to work on shift RPM over here and the, the um, gen, fifth gen trucks, they rev a little bit higher than the gen, uh, gen four trucks. So gen four trucks, it should be something like 55, 25 for your, uh, let's see, one, two shift. And then I think it's 54, 25 for two, three and three, four, and then 5,200 from there down. So what we're going to do, very first thing you want to do is going to put in your gear ratio and tire size. So this truck is a 342. Yours may be different. Yours may be a 308. This one's a 342. Tire size. You're going to type in what you've inputted into the ECU. So I inputted 31.6. Yours may be 30.87. Yours may be 30.79. Yours may be 33 and a half. Um, whatever y'all want to do. And that brings up 33 and a half actually brings up another thing. Um, so a lot of the 35 inch tall tires, um, if you start off with 33 and a half, you'd be surprised at how close your speedo is going to be. 33 and a half is probably the most common tire size I run in Tennessee. Um, anyway, so idle. So you can look at yours. Yours may be uh, 500, 525. We're going to go under engine. Uh, we're going to go under idle and base set point. I have this truck idling. You're going to look at your end gear. Um, so in gear, I have this truck idling at 785. Again, yours may be 500, yours may be 525, 535, 550. I mean, all of them. But this one is a 785. All right, so as far as shift points go on a stock truck, I'm going to show you what I have found to work best. Um, we are actually going to drive this truck with these settings, um, but this is not going to be the settings that I eventually run in this truck. Right now, let's focus on the stock trucks. Um, so first thing we're going to do is stall. Type in 1600. That's a good round number for shift points uh, as far as how loose your converter is on a factory converter. Uh, minimum gear on stock trucks, I put it in four. Excel gear, we go to six. Watt gear, we go to seven. This is, again, this is my settings for a stock pickup truck. Lockup config, leave it alone. Shift lead time, we're going to go to weight of the truck. We'll just say 5,600. Obviously, you're going to use your weight for your truck. Um, rear wheel horsepower, L8353, just use 280 rear wheel horsepower. 
Um, I know manufacturers claim this stuff. Just use 280. So we're going to type in 280. Um, and you can go and hit enter and close that out. Shift slope. This is my person. This is what I found to personally work good. Yours is going to be different. Um, you do all this stuff by shift feel. So we're going to use shift slope as 04 and up truck. Um, and the only thing we're going to change on this, we're going to go over here to the down. This is determines how sensitive the downshifts are. So if you don't like a very aggressive downshift, leave it seven. Um, if you like your truck to downshift and pull hills easily, like I do in Tennessee, especially when towing trailers, go on and take it up to 10. All right, so uh, next thing we're going to do is our shift RPM. So your truck is, uh, if you've got a Gen 5 truck, it's going to be 5,600 uh, for the first couple of gears and then 5,200 for the next ones. I'll show you where I find that at. We're going to go to trans. We're going to go to shift scheduling and we're going to go to full throttle shift RPM. Um, so you click this, you'll see actually, oh, sorry. So this specific truck would have been 5,600 for the first two gears. So we will do 5,600 for the first two gears. Then it was 5,500 for the three, four. And you'll see fifth is going to be 5,200. Sixth is going to be 5,200. So you're going to input that data in. If you want to increase your shift uh, RPM, you can. I have learned that the L83 trucks really like a 5,800 RPM shift, at least for the first two gears. Um, but for now, we're going to just leave it as stock settings. All right, so where we are at right now in this Blue Cat tool, this is going to be basically perfect settings for a factory truck as far as if you've got stock cams, stock uh, you know exhaust, stock all that stuff. This is perfect. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead on. Let me. I'm going to save this file. Um, save as. I'm going to call this number two. And so we're going to open back up Blue Cat. And now we're going to actually do our shift points. We're going to actually install them into the truck. Um, so what I've learned, so Blue Cat doesn't have an easy way of copying and pasting over to the Gen 5 trucks. If you've got a Gen 4 truck, you may find that your truck can be copied and pasted. So we're going to go to export. And like I said, we're just going to leave this set up as Gen, Gen 4 right here. Because again, there is no Gen 5 on here. Um, so we're going to open up part throttle shift up shift and we're going to left click and drag over this, the top ones are up shift. The bottom is down shift. We're going to right click. We're going to just click copy and that's it. Um, and now we're going to come over here and click this top uh, left corner and we are going to paste it in there. Um, so we're going to do the same with the down shift. And you will notice how this downshift right here, how it is factored that you're going to have the same downshift speed for two, three or three, two and the two, one. That is to get rid of the downshift clunk that a lot of people feel. So anyways, we're going to do the bottom three. We're going to right click and drag or yeah, left click and drag. Then we're going to right click and hit copy. We're going to go to downshift. We're going to do this and we're going to go ahead on and do that for all of these on the left hand side over here. So once those are done, we click next fifth gear shift table and again if you need to know left click drag all the way across right click copy click where we're at down shift and fifth click top left click the paste button right here that will paste it in All right, now we are going to be doing this just for the normal mode. Um, normal mode is when tow haul button is not depressed. This is just when you start your truck, pull it down in a drive. That's what we're covering. So now we're going to go to full throttle shift speed. So we're going to click next over here. We can actually now just click copy table, go into normal and paste it. Uh, we click next again, fifth gear watch shift table. We're going to click fifth. We're going to input this in. Sixth gear, we're going to copy table, click sixth. All right, so now this one in normal configuration, it's going to try to get you to change the shift RPM. We do not need to on a stock truck. Um, so we're going to ignore the watt shift RPM table and you're going to leave your factory stuff alone. Now, again, if you want to raise your factory table, you can click normal. If you want to move this up to 5,800, you can. 
but if you move that up to 5800 then you need to move it up in the table that we just configured so again we're doing this like a stock shift points for right now um, now we're going to go over to torque converter we're going to go to apply release and we're going to continue to copy and paste so you'll see we're under normal um, this top row is apply so we're going to drag highlight copy click apply we're going to paste it into there same with release we're going to paste it in there fifth apply fifth release sixth gear we're actually going to be able to copy the whole table because six for whatever reason is not split up in this operating system your operating system may be different um, I'm gonna to have to hope that you guys as bad as I like to say it have the common sense enough to actually be able to understand this and under, like look we're under normal we need to make sure that you do whatever you need to do to get your normal tables to reflect so if it doesn't match up if it honestly at this point if, if you can't figure out how to decipher it for your own operating system you can send me a message I may or may not answer I get literally hundreds of messages a day um, but hopefully you can figure it out if not it may be better off just having a professional do it no offense but sorry um, anyways next we're gonna go to what so we can actually copy the table for this one and go into the what side the same for fifth and same for sixth so again these settings were for a stock truck so if you take my um, like if you do what we're doing on a gen 4 truck you take exactly how I just set up my um, blue cat tool and you input in your transmission tune and you saw my burnout mode video for gen 4 you can actually put those two tunes together and you'll essentially have the exact version of an of an optimized stock tune that I do for customers um, using these settings the, the truck will drive absolutely beautifully it will be night and day difference and you will wish you would have done it a long time ago with that being said um, if you would like to save your settings you can go up here to your blue cat tool click file click save and we can just type in stock uh, gen 5 well, I'll, I'll type in 3.42, 30.87, um, and you can just click save. I saved it wrong because obviously we were 31.6, but either way, you guys can see. Hopefully you can follow along. If not, rewind it and watch it again. So anyway, so I'm going to close this out. If you close this out, it forgets all your settings. That's why we just saved our settings. So I'm still going to close it out. I'm going to save this file as we're gonna call this one number three and I'll put shift points and we're gonna load this thing in the truck so key off key on uh, I'm just gonna flash in just the trans so I'm gonna click do not write and click right oh yeah I forgot to disconnect from the scanner I was I was actually data logging and the truck was idling that, that entire time we were sitting there Now again guys this video is going to be probably pretty long um, i may end up breaking this up into different parts just that way it's not such a long video um, but the, i mean y'all asked for 680 stuff i'm going to teach you exactly how to do this step by step um, now again if you notice something when i speak about it being a stock vehicle or different tire size or different gear ratio just understand you do for your application what you just saw me input was for this truck that we're sitting in right now um, it is not going to be the exact same speeds and everything as yours again a stock truck would have had a 30.87 tire on it um, so again i'm doing it for this specific truck so we're going to roll through this and again for your stock guys this is the part where you can pretty much end the video if you want to end it there you can go out and drive your truck and enjoy it trucks and drive beautifully for the guys that want to get a little bit more aggressive let's continue to follow along so we're going to drive this thing So we're going to get out of this parking lot. 
Now again, I drove this truck with stock shift points with the torque converter and it was awful. Like to the point I just stuck it in manual mode and drove it. Now you'll notice the truck actually now is gonna have reasonable shift points. Even though we set the torque converter stall speed up to 1600, even though the lockup isn't set till your uh, you know, fourth gear and above, for a 3200 stall, I mean, these shift points are actually gonna work okay. So right now I'm maneuvering through a parking lot, trucks understanding exactly what to do. Uh, with the factory shift points, this thing would have already been in like third gear locked up and it would have been shuddering and stumbling and everything else. Um, so anyways, we're gonna pull out of here and I'm gonna start showing you shift speed stuff. So if you notice, this transmission is flaring. Um, we can watch our shift times. If you see how long it's taking the trans to shift, I mean, it is absolutely awful. Now, obviously you stock transmission guys with, with a factory torque converter and a good trans, yours isn't gonna look this bad. Um, but it's still gonna flare. So if you see how big of a gap that is, that is torque management coming in. That is the shift speed taking its sweet time to shift. Um, but overall, you can still watch my shift points and see that this truck is actually shifting pretty decent, honestly. Um, I did not reset my adaptives for whenever I did this. It would have caused the worst flare I've ever seen. The truck would almost be undrivable. So I did not do that. Um, so we're still running on the adaptive presets from the actual trans tune. Not a big deal. Again, what I'm doing, you, you know, going to show you right now is, is uh, specifically for your vehicles and not for this truck. This truck, by the end of this video, will actually have a fully tuned transmission. All right, so we drove it, basically our optimized stock tune. Truck drove okay, shift times were terrible. The trans was constantly trying to um, use torque management to rip out timing. That's what you guys are feeling whenever you go to, to uh, when it goes to shift gears and you feel the truck like nose over, that's what you're feeling is torque management coming in. So again, this truck has a loose converter, so this truck's gonna want different settings than you but I'm gonna show you. Now, this, this specific part, I want you guys to understand, this is Gen 5 specific only, what I'm gonna show you next. Um, this is Gen 5 6L80 specific only. Um, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up our file and we're gonna go to Shift General, or sorry, not Shift General. Uh, where am I even at? Shift Pressures, sorry. Shift Pressures, then General. Um, this pressure pattern mode. This causes so many tuners so many grief, so much grief. They, they'll tune on these transmissions, they'll just fudge numbers, they'll do whatever they can, try to get the transmission shift good, and it just don't shift good. This is the issue right here. There is some pretty nasty fuel cuts um, in normal mode. So we're gonna shift these over to special. And again, this is Gen 5 specific only. If you're Gen 4 and you do this, you're gonna piss the truck off. You do it, it's your own baby, not my doings. I'm telling you it's Gen 5 specific, 6L80 only. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is shift timing. So shift timing is literally the cal calculation that the ECU wants to make the shift. So first off with you Gen 5 guys, if you, if you switched over to special, you can stop this video right now, load that file into your truck and go drive your truck and see if it feels better. If it feels better, great. If not, then come back to the video. But so for now, we're gonna go to um, the shift timing. So if you do a transgo shift kit, uh, they'll actually want almost half the shift time. If you look in their instructions, they'll say like put like 0.5 up top and then 0.2 at the bottom and then interpolate. You do whatever you wanna do. So what we're gonna do is, is on this, section we're only going to do our torque adder table so it's torque adder normal again normal is going to be um, for whenever this pressure pattern mode is in normal um, if you're gonna like so for your gen 4 guys you would just be working under normal um, if you're going to use the special like on our gen 5 guys we can do it down here 
I like to be uni like uniform, as you guys know. So I'm going to do both. So stock trucks do this like five to ten percent at a time. Don't make a drastic change like I'm about to do. So what you're going to do is under torque adder, normal one two. We can click and highlight this all and you can do whatever multiplier you want. Again, I would do this 5% of the time, maybe 10% of the time. I'm gonna go radical because I know roughly what this truck's gonna want. So I'm gonna type in 0 0.5. 0 0.5 is gonna give you a pretty rowdy shift. On a stock truck with a stock converter, it's gonna probably be too much and it's probably gonna jar the dash and you're gonna hate it. So you do what you need to do. Again, I'm we're, we're still, even though I'm showing you guys what to do, we're still tuning on a cammed converter 626L80 truck. So, but again, you want to do 0.9, 0 0.8, whatever you want to do. So we're going to go through and do this on just the upshifts where it's two, three, three, four. We're not going to do this one, three, one, four. We're not doing any of that stuff. So we're going to go to two, three and do the same thing for each of it. So I'm going to do 0.5. All right, now we did it to just this table boat because we're gonna keep our inertia, all our shift stuff, I'll explain this stuff later, but we're gonna keep all the rest of that stuff working as factory. If you just do it in the torque adder table, you're gonna take out a massive chunk out of what you're wanting to accomplish. And for most guys, this is gonna be more than enough. So we're gonna stop and save this file as, and I'm gonna just call it for shift time. Save it. All right, so we're back up and going. And also, I don't think I've mentioned this in the video yet, so hopefully you guys know this, and I'll go ahead on and make sure it's in the description as well. But everything I'm showing you guys worked for the 6L90s as well. Um, the only thing that you can test is on the pressure pattern mode, like if you're a Gen 5 guy. Um, like where it still has an LT engine or LS engine, but it has the LT style ECU. Um, pressure pattern, you can try special, you can try normal. Obviously any of these things that I'm showing you guys, if you make one change at a time and then go drive it, if you don't like something, just don't use it. Again, I'm trying to, I'm trying to cover everybody's basis and explain all of this stuff. Um, so anyways, uh, I'm going to go ahead on and I'm going to reset the adaptives. So again, it's, um it's power button up here transmission trans adapt reset trans adapt preset trans fast adapt reset and the truck can be running it doesn't matter um, but anyways so let's go drive this thing again now what you're going to look at is i can leave these up where you can see them um, these are our shift shift times um, and this is how quick the truck's accomplishing them um, you will see my red line up here is torque management advance. White line is spark advance. So you'll see when we do a shift, you'll see them like swapping around and that'll kind of give you an idea as to um, how quick the shift is going to be. Before you'd see like it have a huge area of torque management advance. This one, obviously, obviously it's going to be a whole lot quicker. So. So you'll see right away how much faster this is now. Obviously, I'm off the throttle right now. I'm pulling up the red light. Um, anyways, I'll speed up the video until we get to a spot where you can actually see it. All right, so if you are watching, you can just see how good these shifts are. Um, pretty much right away. I mean, again, if you've got a, you know, a somewhat tight, but aftermarket torque converter, um, these settings are probably going to get you pretty much on the money. Um, again, we're going to continue to modify this specific truck, but so far we're cruising along pretty good. I mean, this transmission is, is shifting really good, which obviously I haven't done shift points for the cam and stuff on this truck. Um, or I haven't, you know, got, like through lock up on the converter like for what this truck's going to want but even just driving it around right now i mean we're cruising around city traffic 
hitting red lights and stuff, and this truck is just driving like, I mean, to, to most most tuners, if, if they were driving this truck right now, they'd probably think, just let it go, it's perfectly good. I can't do that, but it drives that good even right now. And if y'all notice, truck doesn't stall, it's not doing anything crazy, I'm not getting any weird RPM bounces when I let off the throttle. I can pull through a parking lot, no worries. It's not shaking. You know, the truck doesn't have a super aggressive, you know, lope to it, which is this customer, he wanted kind of more of a mellow truck, um, but make big power, so. But if you'll notice when I let off the throttle, the truck just kind of cruises down, like you can actually see it right here in our tack. I can just let off. The truck maintains idle flawlessly exactly where I want it to be, so. So I will find us another parking lot and we're going to make some more changes. All right. So next changes. Now, a lot of guys ask me about shift inertia. This inertia uh, factor profile, what this essentially is, is it's telling you, if you notice these numbers, it's telling you where it's going to fall at during shift timing. Um, so if we, we can click shift timing and you'll see this transition time and you'll see how it's same the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Um, it's literally telling you it's shift feel as to how it's going to react. So I'll be honest, I very rarely, if ever, have to touch shift inertia. Um, GM did a very good job at having inertia correct. If you get the rest of the trans tune correct, uh, it'll feel good. It, you know, a lot of guys will tell you to add one or two to the whole table of inertia. You can try that. It's going to make the trans definitely shift more rowdy, but you'll learn if you follow the rest of my steps that it's going to be overkill and, it's, and you're going to want to back that inertia down. So I very rarely, very rarely adjust shift inertia. Um, but again, that's all it's doing is it's just changing the, the shift, shift times essentially. Um, so anyways, I'm not going to make any shift and urge changes on this truck. Um, so we're going to go ahead on and I'm going to go ahead on and modify the torque converter lockup points for a 3200 stall. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open my file back up. And so I just open blue cap back up, click file, click open, and we're going to start back off on the same one that we were at. So obviously what I want is I want to do the um, first couple gears. I want this thing shifted at 6,800 RPM as a watt shift. Rest of them, I'm just going to call it 6,600. All right, uh, stall speed, I'm just going to make it. We have a 3,200 stall in here, but you all have to understand that the 3,200 stall is, is completely irrelevant. The stall RPM is based off of torque. Uh, it's more so re uh, referencing the diameter of the converter. Like the diameter of the converter is what dictates, uh, diameter converter and obviously pitch of the stator and stuff inside of it is what dictates the stall speed. So I'm for this truck, I'm just going to use 2400. Um, I want to, this is a triple disc torque converter. Um, so I want this thing to come in in third gear and I want it to do it under acceleration. So this Excel gear part right here. What this is doing is when we had it set up at six, what that meant is the truck's gonna go ahead on a shift all the way up through whatever gears, you know, however you're accelerating, if it wants to get up to fifth or sixth gear, and then you're gonna be cruising on the throttle, like, you know, just steady state. Say you're gonna maintain 55, 60 miles an hour, then the torque converter's gonna come in. Now, this is actually going to come in under acceleration. So it's gonna be like one, two, two, three, three lock, then four lock, then five lock, so it helps to eliminate the 3200 stall feel to the trans. Um, what gear, I'm still gonna leave it at seven. Um, again, as I explained yesterday in, or in the video on this truck, um, what lockup, I usually only have good luck with it being on twin screw supercharged vehicles. Otherwise, I have no watt lockup. Um, that's what feels fastest to me. Um, lockup config, with this specific truck, this 220 camshaft is a very good grind. Um, it doesn't need a super late lockup. So I, what I did was, um, I'm going to go in this in, but we go to lockup config 
and um, this 1350 right here, this is me telling it the minimum RPM that I want the converter to be active at. Um, so then the next thing is, is I want this truck to have almost that, that factory sport shift feel that the Camaros have, where whenever I'm coming up to a red light, I want the truck to almost um, downshift and decelerate the truck. So I'm going to actually make this a zero. This is unlocked pre-down. So now the converter is actually going to stay um, locked on downshifts. So to make sure that the, that the trans can do that, um, we're going to go under torque converter general, and I'm going to have this shift lock, and I'm going to enable this thing. So that's going to allow the torque converter to stay locked for when I command it to. And so now I'm going to take this, and I'm going to hit save and I'm going to save this as we'll just save this as test 3200 stall 6L80 and so now that we're saved now we're going to go back to that same process that we did earlier I'm not going to show you I'll speed up the video so I'm not going to show you every single one because we've already gone over this All right, so now that that's done, um, I'm gonna show you the next thing. We need to go into torque management and we're gonna start working on that a little bit. So first thing with a stall, um, you're gonna see the stall torque management. You need to raise it up till it's out of the way for your torque converter. You can max it out if you want. Again, I like to do like what OE would do. Um, so I'm just gonna add 2000 RPM to both these numbers. Wait, uh, sorry, 2000 RPM. I'm gonna add that to it. So we're at 3,500, 3,300. So that's got that out of the way. Um, TCC limit, um, I'm just gonna disable it. We have a triple disc torque converter in this thing. Um, so the next one is gonna be, if you drive your truck and it downshifts and you notice it almost having like a funky kind of flare on the downshift, that's this limit torque management enable temp. Um, you can just type this in as 493 and that will help to eliminate uh, some of the downshift issues that you may have where if you notice like if it downshifts a gear it'll kind of almost feel a little bit funny if you make this change you'll probably feel it um, the only other torque management change we're going to make this go around is this speed control terminate um, we're going to make this immediate and what that is, is it tells us um, how we're getting our torque management in and out um, whether it's ramping it in and out or whether it's just dropping it out instantly and coming back so what we're going to do is I'm going to save this we're going to call this four or five, if I can type today, five, and then stall converter. We're going to save that, load it in. All right, let's go for a test drive. All right, so now that we've drove this truck with the stall converter shift settings, um, what happens is the torque converter doesn't get a really good lock. And so that's the next settings I'm gonna show you how to do. So to get a good lock, Gen 5 is, I haven't, I think we're missing some tables here. Um, but anyways, I'll show you how to do it on Gen 5. Gen 4 will be a little bit different. So Gen 4 guys, if you've got an aftermarket torque converter, um, you're going to see a switch that says use regulator gain settings. Um, you're going to want to switch that to yes if it's not already. And regulator gain, we're going to set it to, let's set it to 1.5. And then on the Gen 4 guys, 
um, start off with like 50 PSI as your regulator offset. Um, this truck, I'm going to go to 90, but on Gen 4 guys, start off at like between 35 and 50. And if your torque converter still feels like it's not coming in good and solid, keep going up, you know, by say five or 10 PS at a time until you get that converter just with a good lock. Um, max pressure, we, we can just go on and max this thing out, 4,096. KPA is what I'm looking at. You can just tell in the bottom um, what, your, what, you, what your max is. Um, desired pressure, I'm gonna leave this alone at the moment. Um, apply ramp. So apply ramp is, it tells you how much pressure it uses for um, the slip. So if you just wanna start off with something solid, let's, uh, let's go 50% up with an aftermarket torque converter. Again, stock converter guys, Y'all should have ended the video a little while back if I didn't get to say that. Once I started making the shift points for the aftermarket torque converter, you stock converter guys, y'all are pretty much done. Um, you just do everything by feel at that point. Um, so right now we're dealing with aftermarket torque converter guys. So we're gonna go up by 1.50. Um, and then let's, let's leave this right here. So we're gonna file, save as, six, We'll do converter, we'll just call it converter slip. All right, so let's go drop with those settings. Um, also, I wanna make sure you guys understand, I'm, I'm gonna get to the oncoming and offgoing uh, preset pressures. I can go and explain those though. So basically what those are, is those are the initial settings for the TCM to be able to accomplish your shift time. So every time you do a, a trans adapt reset, if you just notice some really nasty flares, again, if it flares while you're still in that gear, it needs more oncoming. If it flares once you're, once the truck's gone into the next gear and then it has a flare, that's more off going. Uh, but the whole goal is to get your oncoming and offgoing preset pressures to allow the vehicle to make the shift time correct. So say, say you put a bunch of oncoming and offgoing, you get all your pressure set to where the trans shift's good. And then over time, it feels like it's losing shift pressure. What does that mean? That means your shift time is too high. That means you were accomplishing a good shift time that you liked and, but the ECU didn't like it. It didn't like it at all. So it started backing it back down because you may have it programmed to where at that specific time, you may have said, hey, let's do a 400 millisecond shift and you were achieving it in 100 milliseconds. So you thought it felt good. Well, the ECU is trying to back itself down to 400 milliseconds. And so I've seen some or heard of some self-declared world's best 6L80 and 6L90 tuners, none understand that. So they'll tell their customers, oh, just reset these pressures, re do, you know, go through your adapt reset presets and all that stuff, almost every drag pass to make sure you get a good shift. What does that mean? That just means they didn't know how to set up shift time and, and the inertia settings correctly. That's their lack of knowledge. But trust me, it, it, you probably, if you guys are on Facebook pages or on any of the 6L80 forums or on HP Tuners forums, you probably know who I'm talking about that, that gives out that kind of information. They just swear they're the best at 6L80, 6L90, 8L90, 10L90. They got all the world records. You know, they don't know what they're actually, they don't know 100% of what they're doing. They know how to get the job done. There's nothing wrong with that, but they don't, if they're gonna call themselves the best, they need to at least understand what these settings actually mean. Anyway, so we're ripping through um, torque converter clutch feels pretty good with our current settings. Um, this is where we can watch our slip. Now, TCC desired slip. This is a slip that we can't get rid of in Gen 5. Um, it's always going to call us four and a half. Nothing we can do about it. Um, but as you can see, it's actually doing a somewhat decent job of, job of maintaining slip. I'm not getting any weird variations in the trans. Um, it, it's almost, I do need to get some, get more aggressive with the ramp for this specific truck you may not need to. So if this is something you play with, the last tables that we adjusted is definitely more shift or torque converter slip feel more than anything. Just then I could feel it, it did, it's still doing some little bit of weirdness. So I'm definitely gonna have to get more aggressive with this thing. Um, so anyways, we're gonna get to another parking lot and we'll make some more adjustments.
all right guys so we are back in the parking lot i've pretty much decided that i mean i've, I've gone over quite a bit on the 6l80 stuff and, and again it's going to take me multiple videos to really do this stuff justice um again if y'all need to see where the oncoming and offgoing preset pressures are you're going to go under shift pressures adaptive and these are what you increase or decrease to meet your shift time um, you're going to have to do it. This is more for your application. I can't tell you what your application is going to want to need. A lot of trucks will have some two, three, uh, clutch wear and some three, four clutch wear. Um, so you may have to increase these quite a bit. Um, again, if you're, if you're commanding a, we'll say you're commanding a 150 millisecond shift, um, and then the truck just won't accomplish that. You're going to have to keep increasing it. Well, you know, whatever you need to do to get it to happen. Now, again, in the, on the Gen 5 guys, where we did our pressure pa pattern mode and special, we're going to basically be modifying our special sides of these, but I would always just do it uniform. Um, so if you, if say you modify like we did on this truck, uh, in, actually in the other, yesterday's video, um, if we add more to the 2.3, we need to add it on to the 2.3 special and the 2.3 here on the oncoming side. Um, but again, oncoming is for flare in gear, in the same gear that you're in. Uh, uh, off going is for a flare and when you're already in the next gear or say RPM comes up and it drops down but then immediately flares that's off going um, let's see if is there anything else I need to tell you guys about in this video torque management if you want to talk about it don't disable it unless you want a broken trance well you don't there's no, no reason to disable it you can get lightning quick shifts out of these things um, if you want to adjust it there's two different ways you can do it you can go under torque management upshift torque factor um, torque factor if you one means full um, torque management and you can start to decrease torque management pretty quickly like right here so if you want to type in like 0.7 that would be like a 30 percent reduction in torque management um, you can play with these however you want if you want to get a little bit more intricate with your settings you can go under add or modifier down here at the bottom and this is rpm based so say you want no torque management at light throttle but you still want some at high throttle um, you, and, and now these you want to make negative. Um, so say you want no torque management down low, you would come right here to say 2875 and down, you would type in negative one. And so zero means full torque management, negative one means no torque management. Um, so you would type in equal. And then say you wanted half torque management here, you could type in 0.5, so negative 0.5. And then you could interpolate and you could rock it this way. Um, there's still going to be some torque management there. So that's, that's the only tricky part about these is it's there. It's just not as apparent. And it actually, it's, it decreases the amount of time. It's probably the best way to put this is this is more of how long is torque management active during the shift time. Um, again, if you play with it on your own truck, you'll see what I'm talking about. Um, but anyways, I feel like this video is about as long as it needs to be. It's probably way longer than it should be. Um, if you guys have more questions on the 6L80 stuff, uh, leave me a comment on this video and I will do more videos. Again, we can do some videos on shift inertia. Um, for you dyno guys, if you used my, like how I talked about being able to hold a truck into like third gear on the dyno, um, if you have an issue where it'll hold third gear lockup and all of a sudden it kicks out, you're going to go to general. And it's this commanded gear control limits. Just make it higher than what you're planning on revving it to. So you can say 8,000 and say 200 miles an hour and load that in. And that will allow you to use your VCM scanner to hold the gear. Um, otherwise, we're going we're gonna to end this video off uh, right there. I will do some more uh, parts to the 6L80 stuff. So I'll definitely include those either this week, next week. Uh, we can get more intricate. I'd like to actually get some of you guys' feedback on the video and see what else you may have questions about um, before I make the next video. But anyways, thanks again for the thousand subscribers. Um, we're still gonna be rocking right on along. I'm gonna grow this channel as big as we need to get it. Um, so thanks for the likes, the comments, the subscribes. Yeah, have a good day guys. Talk to you later.